Hey, what's going on? BTBT is back in Brooklyn once again, and this week we find ourselves at Five Burrows Brewing Company, located at 215 47th Street. Perry, how you doing? Pretty good. Another another early morning with beer, I guess. Yeah, another early morning with beer. It's, 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 always, it's always a good way to start the day. Uh, this beautiful space was at one point a steel industrial factory, but it's now home to the third biggest brewing space in New York City, behind the Bronx Brewery and Brooklyn Brewery. So again, BTBD, very happy to be here at Five Burrows. We have three very special guests here today. Gentlemen, please uh, please introduce yourselves. Hey, I'm Blake Tomnitz, one of the co-founders here at Five Burrows. Uh, I'm Nick Griffin, the head brewer at Five Burrows. And Kevin O'Donnell, the other co-founder at Five Burrows. Awesome, guys. Thanks, uh, thanks so much for uh, hosting Beer Today, Beer Tomorrow. We're very happy to be here. So, so tell us, you know, what, what was the inspiration behind Five Burrows? Um, crazy enough, the concept actually originated back in the summer of 2011. Um, and, and really, it was kind of this, this question of, of what is New York City's beer? You know, what, what is New York City's brewery? And I don't know if there's really a specific answer. Um, and I think for us, it was really about creating kind of a holistic comprehensive concept for New York City. It, it didn't matter what borough you were from. It didn't matter what neighborhood you were from. Uh, it didn't matter if you've been drinking craft beer for, for ages or it's your first beer. Um, it was really about kind of, you know, even with our, our, our tagline and slogan, uniting people by beer. Um, you know, I was an amateur home brewer in college, um, and that's really kind of where things, I guess, kicked off in my mind. Walked into a homebrew shop over in, in Cambridge, Massachusetts, and um, my head kind of just exploded. Um, kind of dazed by the infinite nature of beer. So met Kevin in the corporate world um, and then ultimately uh, met Carl Knup, who's our oper- uh, operations manager. Um, he was the operations manager over at Brooklyn Brewery for about a decade and then he introduced us to Nick. So before you know it, we we're kind of off to the races, so to speak. Not very cool. Not very cool. Now, Kevin and Blake, you guys actually, you guys were on Wall Street, right? That is correct, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> we don't always advertise. <laughs> <laughs> It's not like it is in the movies. We'll promise you that. Yeah. <laughs> we loved it so much. We uh, left right. and started to brew. <laughs> right. So, so, <laughs> so, so I'm curious. Was there like that specific moment or specific point when you guys were like, "Yeah, you know what? That's it. You know, we're 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 ready for this new venture, this new chapter." Yeah, definitely. We were uh, actually at the Armory at a uh, at a beer festival, and uh, Blake was talking about the idea and. I kind of was pushing him to go do it, um, thinking that he was going to go do it himself. And uh, he called me that Monday at my desk at the office and said, uh, I'm going to do it. And I said, great, you know, go for it. He's like, but you're going to do it with me. And I was like, uh, what? <laughs> and uh, that started the process of kind of, you know, going around, seeing breweries. We literally traveled almost the country just looking at other breweries and went on far too many brewery tours, which was great. But, I mean, we got to see how... Uh, how people did it and, um, you know, learn from other people's mistakes and learn from other people's good things, too. And uh, a lot of what we did here was based on kind of that research that we did at other places all mm-hmm. across, you know, primarily northeast, but, um, you know, all across the country. Very cool. And and so f- from from the moment you realized this is what you're going to do to to actually making that move. So how long did it take to go from from thought to reality? Really, I think we started full time on it, I want to say early 2015 for me. Um, and then Kevin kind of quit work about six months later. Um, really, I think we, we were committed to it probably in like late 2014. Uh, we signed the lease here in July of 2015, summer of 2015. Um, spent about six months doing demolition work um, and then about a year of build out and about six months of what we effectively called like a wet run of our entire system, scaling up all our homebrew batches. We had kind of a, a more beer 15 gallon system that we had up in Mott Haven in the South Bronx. And we kind of lugged it around kind of traveling home brewers all throughout the city. Uh, went out to Carl's place in the Rockways during the summer, which was um, amazing. Uh, needless to say. So quite a process. I'd say easily two plus years. Um, and then launched the first week of August uh, with about 17 plus launch parties across all five boroughs. So I think we're actually at about six months now, which is a uh, seems a lot longer. I don't know if that's a good or a bad thing, but <laughs> <laughs> well, I mean, this, this is a beautiful space. It's huge. You know, how did you guys actually come across this, this physical space? Um, we, uh, hired a real estate agent first and foremost. I think, um, we, we did some online kind of, I guess, searching, so to speak. We were looking, um, up in the South Bronx, we were looking out in Bushwick and, um, our real estate agent was like, you got to come down to Sunset Park, got to come down to Southwest Brooklyn and saw this space, saw the ceiling heights, uh, which you just, you don't really see spaces like this in the city anymore. You know, 30 plus foot ceilings. It was obviously built for kind of heavy manufacturing. Mm-hmm. And for us, it was, it was kind of the realization of, 
not only revitalizing kind of this this old age manufacturing industrial spot in Brooklyn, but more importantly, it gave us the ability to produce enough beer to reach all the consumers in the five boroughs, which was kind of always part of our business model of, of making sure we could produce enough beer um, to reach all the corners of the five boroughs. I joke that it was kind of like that scene from Ghostbusters where they go see that, you know, broken down right. firehouse and they're like, this is great. You know, it's very similar. <laughs> I mean, this place, there was really nothing here. Um, but I remember that first kind of walkthrough we did and, and the vision of, this is where the brew house will go. This is where the tap room will be. And it, it basically is that way now. So that initial walkthrough we did is, is pretty much, I mean, some, some changes here and there. But for the most part, you know, the footprint that we've envisioned back mm -hmm. then is, is what, we, what we built. So That is awesome. So, I mean, you, got, you guys already touched on it a little bit. But what, what would you say the philosophy here is at, uh, at Five Arrows? I would really kind of get, harken back to that, that United by Beer. I think for us it's about really... Um, uniting New Yorkers through beer and, and more importantly I think kind of evolving beyond what it means just to be a kind of production facility of where we make beer and and kind of using that eccentricity and that innovation that we put into and you know really Nick takes the charge on, on in terms of formulating our products and our beers and encouraging people to get out and see the city and see everything it has to offer you know it, we're a little biased but we do think we live in the greatest city in the world and um, there's so many there's so much to see there's so much to do there's so many great people to meet um, and what better way to do that than over a beer? So absolutely, absolutely. And, and now, so what was the process like when you were selecting a, a head brewer? Um, really, it was, it was a, a mutual connection with Carl. So our operations manager, he's like, "You got to, you got to meet Nick. You got to meet Nick." And we, we met Nick, and I think we knew pretty much right away that um, this was going, you know, someone that uh, was going to be able to come in and, and really take the challenge of starting an operation like this head on, and had the skill set, you know, had the knowledge, and, and, and had the kind of the breadth to sit there and make sure we were making beer that could reach all people. Oh, very cool. And, and so, Nick, what, what's the most exciting thing for you about, about working here at Five Barrows? Uh, I think the most exciting thing was just being able to start this project from the ground up. Um, so I started pretty much right after the demolition phase. So to kind of see the transition from this, you know, bare bones industrial facility that, you know, the paint was coming off the walls <laughs> and there was, you know, some, you know, pretty intense construction and demolition work going on, you know, seeing that space change from what it was all the way through to what it is today. It was just you know, a really cool experience yeah. and something that yeah. we, all, we all joke about. You know, it was a great experience to go through and we all learned so much, but you look at the prospect of you know, doing it again and it makes you like shudder a little bit. <laughs> yeah. So much work. So you know, we're, all, we're all very happy that you know, right. we're, we're done with that phase and now we're you know, making beer and kind of moving into being the production facility that we've been preparing for for so long. Right. And, and you guys have a very diverse selection on tap. Do you, do you, do you kind of have a preference as far as what, what are some of your, you know, beer styles that you favor? Do you sure. have a yeah, particular so style? We, so we pretty much always have, um, you know, and this is as of a couple weeks ago, 16 beers on tap. So you can come see us in the tasting room um, and there'll pretty much always be a pretty wide variety of beers. Uh, in terms of my personal preference, uh, I'm a, a big kind of traditional lager drinker. So I'm really proud of our Pilsner. Um, right now we have a Schwartz beer on, I think it's really good. And it seems like every two months now we're, we're doing traditional continental lagers on our 30 barrel system. So those are beers that you can get not only here, but also out uh, in the market as well. Oh, very, very, very But very even cool. if you're, so like I said, I'm a more of a lager drinker, even if you're into hazy pale ales or Belgian beers or big stouts or, you know, we have a, a pretty wide variety here. so pretty confident that somebody can come and you know, we'll find something that you enjoy. Uh, I'm sure. I'm sure. And, and kind of a question I'll pose to all three of you. I mean, what was, was there, do you guys recall, was there a specific beer that got you guys first into craft beer? Was, was there, you know, what was that kind of moment that introduced you to the craft beer world? I, I, well, I grew up in Dallas, Texas. So I think uh, back in the day, Shiner was kind of a, a big thing of beyond kind of the silver bullets of the world, so to speak. And kind of watching my dad drink Shiner was kind of that initial, of, what is this? And they were always kind of being unique with the, their holiday beers and their seasonal beers. And um, I, I think I still kind of look to them as, as very much of a, an aspirational brand in terms of what they were able to do, uh, let alone in the South at the time. So when I was uh, in college, my roommate and I would, you know, go out and buy a 30 pack of Bud Light or mm -hmm. Bush or whatever. We'd also buy a six pack of Sierra Nevada. And that's how kind of we'd start our night with, a, with a couple Sierra Nevadas. And that was definitely the brand I, I remember vividly was, you know, the first brand that I really had that wasn't, you know, a macro beer. Um, and I still, you know, love Sierra Nevada to this day. I think yeah. they come out with great stuff and 
I always know what I'm gonna get when I when I buy a when I buy a six pack or whatever of Sierra Nevada. So, uh, so I'm from Buffalo, and uh, Southern Tier has a big presence yep. there. Um, so I think you know some of the big styles that they used to make, and then also their their hoppy beers were kind of eye-opening and i also had a chance to work there so that oh, it was nice. kind of <laughs> so curious so obviously you guys make great beers here when you, when you guys today when you're not drinking your own beers are there any other beers or breweries that are, that are kind of impressing you guys right now uh i think that uh von trapp brewing i mentioned earlier my kind of love of traditional lagers mm-hmm. but von trapp brewing up in vermont i think is putting out some absolutely killer beers right now definitely one of my favorites uh, I had the Keg and Lantern Hellas a couple weeks ago, and I love that beer. I, yeah. Every time I see it on their menu, I'm a big fan of that. So um, I'm, I'm into that for sure. Cool. I'm a, a Finback fanboy, I would admit. So. <laughs> <laughs> and Basil and Kevin are very aware of that. Um, yeah. <laughs> I was packing up my backpack there uh, way before this place opened. So, um, yeah, I'd say Finback. <laughs> Yeah, <laughs> all, all very good choices. So now you, you mentioned you guys have the home brew background. So when you guys are coming up with the beers, is there, is there like I'm, I'm sure there's a level of collaboration there. Can you tell us a little bit of what's what's the process like when you guys are coming up with uh, with new marvelous stuff? Yeah, I mean, I, I would say um, Nick, for the most part, and he can kind of elaborate. You know, really is driving it. It's it's kind of a blank whiteboard, and I would say we have um, obviously it kind of goes through. We have Monday morning team meetings, which uh, end up in some some healthy lively debates about what styles we're going to make you know and the cool thing is we have you know our team members are all you know from different backgrounds whether in beer not in beer or whether managing bars not managing bars so um it's actually kind of fun you know but i would say you know nick is really kind of at the helm and running running the whole creative process so yeah so i mean right now similar to what blake said we have you know meetings pretty regularly and everyone just kind of throws ideas out of beers that they want to see Right now, before we step beers up on the 30 barrel, for the most part, we're doing some R&D on our, our five barrel system. Um, so, you know, all the team members will throw out some ideas. Someone will say, you know, I want a, you know, a lactose pale ale or I want a, a Hellas lager or something. Um, we'll get on the schedule, we'll brew it on the five barrel, and then we can kind of monitor its performance in the tasting room. And if it's a beer that really starts to take off, then, you know, it's a lot easier for us to say, all right, it's worth spending the time and the resources and, and stepping this beer up and brewing it on the large system. And what would you say has been the quote unquote kind of wildest, craziest beer that you've uh, you've brewed? <laughs> um, the wildest beer, I guess, just from a, a process standpoint. This, I think, you guys are both having the lactose pale ale. Yeah. Um, that was the first time I had used lactose in a hoppy beer, and it's all really late whirlpool hopping. Um, so, kind of, I guess, the most out yeah. there from just a process standpoint, I would say. Yeah. Very enjoyable, by the way. I really, I really dig this beer. Thanks. So, can you guys tell me? I mean, you, you mentioned it a little, but can you elaborate a little bit more on the kind of production volume here and, and kind of what it is now and, and what it will be in the in the near future? <laughs> <laughs> it's so like it's so. I mean, we're six months in, so it's so hard to like decide, you know, or how much we're going to do. I think. Where do you think we're probably at about? We've made close to a thousand barrels. Yeah, in the, that thousand barrels. Thousand yeah. Plus. So yeah, six right months, now. about a thousand barrels. Um, our, I think our current tank capacity could could get us in the probably three to four thousand range for for this year. Yeah. Um, depending on how summer goes, and I mean, again, we're six months in, so yeah. it's really hard to figure out trends and stuff. Mm-hmm. Um, you know, we did a walkthrough before we, we went live on here, but you know, th- there is room to grow in the space for mm-hmm. sure, and we can certainly add more tanks. Um, again, it's all dependent on ales versus lagers, kind of mm-hmm. what the split yeah. is. There's some other infrastructure improvements mm-hmm. that need to be made to the brew house to, to get larger tanks in here. Yeah. But, um, I mean, we, we feel comfortable saying that we can probably push. I, I would say, I mean, like, kind of our, our initial kind of, like, you know, estimates, we're looking at, like, max capacity here, like 60,000 plus barrels, which, you know, just from a business model side, we're really looking to push just within the five boroughs. We think, we think it's possible. You know, I think New York city is, is there are a lot of breweries here, but I think there's still so much room for growth. And, um, there are so many residents, there are so many, you know, so many tourists, so many retail accounts, um, that I, I'm excited about where the craft beer scene is moving in New York city and, um, the ability for kind of all of us to continue to grow. It, it's kind of like an anomaly, like nationwide, like this New York city, there's not really a market like this anywhere else. So, um, we, don't I think like to, we don't like to say that number in front of Nick, though, because he starts to, he starts to shake a little <laughs> That's bit. That's a lot of beer. That's a lot of beer, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Um, oh. But, yeah, so we're, it's exciting. 
Yeah, absolutely. And now you guys, you guys have uh, a yeast lab here on, on site. Can you tell us a little bit, a little bit about the lab? Sure. So um, I have a quality control background. That's how I got my start in in brewing. Um, and one of the things that we're pretty serious about here is making sure that all the product that leaves our facility is, um, you know, up to our standards. So uh, when we were going through the build out, we carved off a nice space to set up a, you know, a full quality control lab. So right now we're, we're doing some, you know, cell counting and some more basic brewing specs, but it's set up for the future to have the space to do things like having a full microbial program, doing our own uh, yeast propagation, that kind of stuff. So, you know, trying to stay ahead of the curve when it comes to, to quality control, quality management, especially as we grow into that, that capacity that was mentioned earlier. Right. Because that's a serious amount of beer and you, know, yeah. you need to have the investment in quality if you're going to, you know, be moving that kind of volume. Right. No, absolutely. Absolutely. And now you guys, you guys have, you know, obviously six months in, you guys have a lot of interesting things coming up. You guys have a lot of cool stuff in the works. Mm-hmm. Can you guys kind of talk about that a little bit? Yeah, absolutely. I mean, we um, I think something we're, we're really excited about um, is we did a collaboration brew, I want to say a week, week and a half ago. It's called the uh, Class of 2017. Um, and it's a collaboration between all nine breweries the, that launched over the course of 2017. So this is something that's really exciting. Um, actually, I have to give credit to Sean Torres out at Killsboro. Um, I was talking to Chris Kuzma at Fifth Hammer about it, but um, we were at the uh, Blocktoberfest celebration at the well, and uh, uh, probably more beers in than we wanted to be, but um, <laughs> Sean kept on making the statement to me saying, you know, I'm a fan of classes, I'm a fan of classes, and I was like, I have no idea what you're talking about. Um, <laughs> but that's really how the whole thing started, and uh, kind of sent out you know, some, some feeler emails, and everyone was, was totally in for it, and so um, I'm like, yeah. Had a big collaboration day. We're canning that uh, in about you know a week or two, and we'll have it right before opening bash. And um, it was a lot of fun. I think it's a it was a chance for for us to meet some of the other breweries we haven't met before. And I mean, just to run down the list, I got it here. It's, it was Circa, Death Ave, Fifth Hammer, um, ourselves, Island to Island, Killsboro, Lineup, Randolph Beer and Dumbo, and Mortega. Wow. Um, so pretty exciting that that. Yeah all occurred um in in one year so um we're, we're really really happy um with the prospect of this so it's like a super collaboration <laughs> yeah i know right <laughs> i don't know if anyone's ever done nine 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 brewery collaboration before maybe we'll see but all great people and um yeah it'll be fun so and that and that's so will that be uh you said they'll be canned and released here uh, yeah, so we'll be doing cans um, as well as draft, um, and we did make it. Nick can kind of elaborate on this. It is going to be technically a, a New York State labeled beer slash farm beer, so that uh, gives everyone else the ability to pour it in their tap room. Um, and you know, we'll have cans of it opening bash, and it will be going out to uh, select retail accounts throughout the five boroughs. Uh, so the beer that we did uh, was a you know hoppy pale beer. Uh, we actually used twenty percent New York State ingredients in it. So uh, there's a company called Valley Malting up in Massachusetts that actually gets New York State grains and a malt them for you. And they have really nice heirloom wheat called warthog wheat. So we used quite a bit of that in the grist. And then we also used a bunch of uh, Cascade and Chinook hops from Peterson Farms in the Finger Lakes as well. Very cool. So it was a cool showcase to use some of these unique New York State ingredients, especially as we're going into you know, New York City Beer Week. Right, right. And what was it like for you to collaborate with all these other uh, it was, It's, you know... It's like herding cats. In a good way. In a good way, yeah. yeah. You're, you're, you're sending out these emails to all these people who are in the first year of their production because they've obviously just launched. It's like all yeah. of us. So they're busy as can be and, you know, trying to get everyone, like, you know, agree to a date and a beer style and a recipe was just, you know, a little trying at times. But in the end, we did manage to find a day that worked for everyone and get everyone, you know, down to see us and, and brew the beer together. So yeah. it was fun and you know, great meeting all those guys. We're having a, a class of 2017 launch party on the 22nd, so it's Thursday, um, before opening bash on that Saturday, the 24th. Um, so hopefully everyone from all the other respective breweries uh, can attend, but we're excited for that. All right. And what, what time is that on the 22nd? I believe it starts at, before I misquote, <laughs> Anne's going <laughs> to, Anne who runs all of our events and promotions. 
Let me make sure I got this right. But that's exciting, though. I mean, nine yeah. brewery collaboration. It starts at 4 p.m. when we open. So okay. <laughs> get the party started <laughs> the, early. Uh, yeah, the beers, you know, the, the cans will be available starting yeah. when we open. Um, that, that is definitely something to be looking forward to. And obviously, you also mentioned NYC Beer Week coming up as well. I'm sure you guys have a bunch planned, a uh, bunch of stuff planned for that, right? Yeah, um, Ann, who kind of heads up all our events and promotions, is, is working on uh, quite a few events for that week. Uh, our, our calendar's pretty packed. Uh, I believe we have one at Craft Culture, and um, she's in the process of, of working uh, with Alewife on one as well, so that's pretty exciting. So um, she's she's really been um, leading the charge. I think for us, it's uh, bean fiber bros. We want to make sure that um, we're kind of giving every borough some love, and, and more importantly, consistently kind of making connections with consumers in each borough, finding out what they like, what they don't like. And there's really no better way to do that than to kind of go out to these bars firsthand and, and sample people on the beer and connect with them and, and find out what they're drinking, find out what, you know, what they, what they hate and what they love. And, um, she's been, I mean, I can't even, I feel like we've done easily in the last six months, over a hundred events across the five boroughs. So, um, nice. I don't know how she, <laughs> she does it. <laughs> <laughs> Wow, that's a lot of events, but that's just, you know that's yeah. part of the, the hustle and grind. I'm yeah. sure you guys are kind of probably here like almost every minute of the, of the day, right? Yeah, um, it's true. I mean, yeah. it's a you go all in, mm-hmm. um, and you know we, we we do our best to to get some time away and, and kind of split up the responsibilities so everybody makes sure they get you know a day off or, or out of here. But um, you know it's a it's a living living breathing organism. This this company, so yeah. I mean you, you have to be talking with people and. And engaging with folks both in the tap room and out at, out at accounts and um it's it's busy but it's it's what we wanted to do it's it's why we started it so um we're we're doing it yeah no that's great and and since you guys have officially opened I mean, what's the response been like from the from the immediate community here so I, I think for at least you know the sunset park neighborhood we've kind of been you know they're treating us almost as a bar uh, because there's not that many places to get craft mm-hmm. beer um in the in the in the immediate neighborhood so yeah. Folks are coming down here, and um, it's been really respi- or receptive. You know, we've got families coming in, and they bring you know food in with them, and they set up, and they play board games all day, and um, it's just a comfortable place for people to come, and they feel safe. And um, you know, when the when the weather's nice, it's a real outdoor feel when we bring the garage doors up, yeah. and um, it's just a comfortable place. You know, we're family friendly and. Um, dog, dog friendly, friendly. And, dog friendly. <laughs> uh, we're, we're just friendly so. <laughs> right um yeah I, I think the other cool thing too and, and and something that uh nick and ryan bedford our tapper manager have been um taking the lead on is we just received our, our combined craft manufacturer license so we were a microbrewery before that um and then we now have both a microbrewery license and a farm brewery license so um we had already been making some far beers anyways we've done a collaboration with jason over at strong rope um we did uh, a new york state beer for for uh, new york rye week um which is really exciting it was a rogan beer um but now this also um gives us the ability to have uh new york state wine spirits and cider available so um it's exciting because not only does it help us kind of, you know, with hosting events and, and other people, we've had already had a wedding here, so that's pretty exciting. Wow. All right. um, yeah, s- right some on. more on the docket. But, you know, for people who um, may not drink beer or be interested in beer, even though those are the people I think we like to talk the most yeah. to, <laughs> um, we will have uh, some other options available in, in the coming weeks and months. So to support the kind of, I said, you know, the whole New York State beverage scene. So uh, that's exciting. Yeah, very exciting. So you'll, you'll be brewing cider as well? So we won't be making cider here, but we'll be able to pour New York State New York cider, State cider okay. tasting room. Yeah. So New York State cider, wine, any New York State spirits as well. Um, and it's, I mean, we went and we were able to taste some wines the other day, and it's really exciting some of the things that are starting to uh, come out of New York State. I mean, I don't think the quality has ever been higher um, across, you know, whether it's wine, cider, beer, spirits, so... Yeah, I mean, you got a Long Island alone, you have a ton of wineries, yeah. I mean, it's wine country Long out Island, there, Long Island, Finger yeah. Lakes, I mean... So it's, you know, it'd be really cool to get people down here and introduce them to, you know, some of the products you can get that are, you know, manufactured in New York State. Absolutely. I mean, that's, that's, that's pretty great. You guys got a lot, a lot of interesting things going on and um, you guys creating a really great, great buzz for yourselves. I mean, obviously you guys have, have really, really, really good beer, uh, which helps. Thank you. It's uh, <laughs> <laughs> a good first start, right? Yeah, it's a, it's a good it's a good first step. Um, but just kind of uh, open question, all three. I mean, what's what's the most exciting thing about what you guys are doing right now? I, I always say, I mean, in the beginning, I think we all knew exactly where our beer was um, out in accounts, and I think uh, it's, it's pretty cool now to walk into a place and not expect it to be on and see it. 
or to get text messages from friends saying like, hey, I'm drinking your IPA at, you know, at Wolfie and Nell in the West Village, you know, and not knowing that we were actually pouring there. Um, and just starting to see people, you know, even listening, just talking about it in public, um, you know, not knowing that we're sitting right next to them. Um, mm. So it's cool to see the, the customer engagement for sure on, on the products, you know, out in quote unquote, the yeah. real world. I'd say like kind of in line with that, it's, it's beer is sociable, you know, it's personable, it's community oriented. I think that's kind of been not only just getting to know more people within the New York City, uh, you know, craft beer scene in New York State and overall, but just getting out there and talking to people. And I think that's just the most, I think that's the most fun part to show up to accounts and, and, and really kind of gauge uh, what people are liking, what they're not. Um, you know, it, it's, it's fun, you know, um, it, it's a good opportunity. And, it, you know, to Kevin's point too, it, it is really exciting to, to walk into a random place and, and have something tangible. Um, so I'd say quite a bit, but definitely the interaction with, with consumers and kind of the community in general. Our buddy Justin, he he uh, he usually does a show with us. He's not with us today, but he always has this one question that he loves to ask, and he always asks. So, when was the last time you had a non-craft beer beer, and what was it? Oh my gosh. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I had a uh, Vine Stefaner Hellas last night. <laughs> <laughs> it's not a bad choice. It's not a bad choice. <laughs> uh, um, I'm trying to think. It's a tough one, huh? <laughs> I think I've been handed a few. <laughs> Maybe open them and then set them aside. I don't. <laughs> yeah, I can. Uh, I think. Oh, you know what? I know exactly when it was. Oh yeah. Uh, <laughs> they'll make fun of me, but I went. To, I went to see Fish uh, the okay. night on uh, December 30th at the Garden. And the first beer I had was a Miller Lite. The second beer I had was a uh, Sierra Nevada Foam, okay. um, which is what they make specifically for the band Fish, which I did not know about until that show. So okay. I did have a Miller Lite to start, and then I saw the, uh, the Sierra Nevada and had that. So right back to the Sierra Nevadas. But that was definitely the last uh, macro. M- mine was uh, Lone Star. <laughs> <laughs> uh, you know, it, it's, um, <laughs> it, it's funny, though, but Miller Lite actually is the most common response. Miller Lite seems to be yeah. the uh, non-craft beer of choice. But uh, so, just a- another kind of difficult to answer question, but I'll ask it anyway. Currently, of the sixteen beers you guys have on tap now, Ooh. very good beers. Obviously, very different styles, which is another great thing about your lineup here. I mean, there's really something for every beer drinker. But do you guys have specific favorites on the list currently? I'm going to start to sound like a broken record here, but my, <laughs> my favorite beer is the Pilsner. Pilsner probably guess yeah <laughs> i've been loving the uh huge black lager fan so obviously the short spirit but i've really been digging the uh the amber ale recently this english style bitter you know i, I think primarily because it's 3.8 percent, so i feel like i can uh, feel less guilty about having one before five o'clock um but <laughs> also i think it's just kind of a style that doesn't get as much love as it really should um so um i've been i've been enjoying that one quite a bit as of late uh, I like kind of the hybrid in between the IPA and the Pilsner. So uh, currently I'm having a, a dry hopped Pilsner, but I also love our hoppy lager, which is kind of that IPL, you know, in between. Um, a little bit lighter, but still has that, you know, great hop characteristic. So um, those are probably my two favorite right now would be the, the dry hop Pilsner or the hoppy lager. Mm-hmm. And now you know, we, we spoke about how, um, you know, the craft beer culture in New York is exploding, but obviously there's still room for continued growth. I mean, where, where do you guys see the future of craft beer in general for New York? I think New York City, the, the biggest um, thing that's going to kind of prevent it from growing is, is, is obviously rising real estate costs. Um, but, you know, finding zone spaces, you know, I, I think um, we're in an area that um, kind of has been historically industrial and, and, and was kind of perfectly suitable for a business like ours moving in here. So I, I'm hoping that it continues to grow. I, I don't think it will... Um, probably I don't think it will result in you know massive scale large breweries that are kind of evolving and from local to regional um, and I'm th- thinking just you know in general we, we did kind of have that what we call internally kind of that Midas touch period that like 2009 to 2012 where there's these crazy um, almost unsustainable growth rates year over year and you saw a lot of local breweries um, evolve into regional breweries at the time and I think um, kind of underestimated potentially where the market was heading. Um, so for us, it was um, staying local, having this ability to be a hyper-local brewery, but also a large production facility. So I think it's it's going to be a lot of uh, more hyper-local breweries that are really focused on uh, you know, a certain geographic area, whether that be a borough or a neighborhood. Um, so 
Um, that's kind of where I see it in New York City. Yeah, I think I think keeping the New York City breweries strong together as well yeah. is important. I mean, uh, the New York City Brewers Guild, I think, is, is operating extremely well right now. Mm -hmm. I mean, monthly meetings, we've got Beer Week coming up, um, and I think continuing to keep that and keeping the New York City beer scene, um, you know, extremely high quality is only going to help us all out and, and continue to, to, to be important. I mean, every brewery, I'd say, in the country is looking to get into New York City, yeah. so yeah. Uh, we're up against a lot. Um, but if New York City breweries can, can keep their level extremely high, um, it'll give us a much better shot at, at you know, uh, yeah. you know, continuing to, to build on a great scene that we have here. So, yeah, yeah absolutely. It'd be nice to walk into a place and just see New York breweries on top. Right? That would be <laughs> <laughs> that would be ideal. So, are there other things that you guys want to talk about that you guys have coming up? Anything, any type of uh, uh, events or other beers in the works? Anything that you guys want to kind of let the audience know? So from a beer perspective, you guys actually caught us at a good time. We mentioned New York City Beer Week coming up. Yeah. So this is a, a time where um, you'll probably be able to see some of our more limited beers that are normally only in our tasting room kind of get sprinkled out to a couple of our events um, in Manhattan, Brooklyn, all over the city. Um, so, you know, if, there's a good chance if you go to one of the Five Bros events during Beer Week, there's going to be, you know, some sort of special beer there. So we have a, a half of Weizen that we've brewed with all New York okay. State ingredients coming through. Uh, we have a Belgian quad, a single, uh, some more kind of specialty release stuff that you know, you'll be able to get outside of our tasting room. Didn't we use a malt recently too that was pretty cutting edge? Or oh, Eric, yeah. were we on like one of the first ones to use something? We were, yes. Yeah. So um, we brewed a Maybach recently, uh, a couple weeks ago, and we used a malt. It's called Ericlea Pilsner Malt, which is a Weirman product. Um, but we were actually the first brewery, as far as I know, to use this malt uh, in the United States. Wow. Yep. So our, our BSG rep came by and, you know, said, oh, you know, we have this great Pilsner malt. I know you guys do a lot of lagers. Like, you know, check it out. And he brought by some samples and we tasted it. And it was just perfect timing where, you know, he stopped in with this malt and we had this Maybach coming up within a couple of weeks. So uh, we were able to get a, a shipment in as soon as possible and brew this beer. That'll be uh, ready in about a month. So... Really excited to taste the final product. And you know. do you guys have a have a, have a name for the beer yet? Uh, Mybach. My, yeah, okay. yeah sorry. <laughs> to the point. With, uh, yeah, with, to the point. A, a lot of our beers are named uh, just for the style that they yeah. are. Um, so we try we try to keep it simple and make sure people know exactly what they're getting when they order one of our beers. Now, from the locals who come in, do you, do you feel uh, do you find that they prefer a particular style over the other? Is there certain beers that are more popular than than others currently? It's such a like it's such a mix, you know. Yeah. Ryan, our, our tapper manager, was saying that last night was a, a IPA night, you know, and, and a lot of our, our West Coast style IPA was was poured last night. And I think again, we're so new that it just changes all the time, um, and there's it's hard to see trends. Um, and we have so many different beers too that it, it changes all the time. And, and I think sometimes it's a little like if people overhear somebody else ordering something, they yeah. kind of just go that way too. So it's a lot of you know different kind of factors you know at play there, but. Um, I would say I think the you know we do sell a lot of pilsner in the tap room, uh, but we do a lot of flights too, so people are able to try you know mm -hmm. multiple different beers. Sure. Uh, yeah. You know. so yeah, our, our fruited goza series when we launch. I mean, we do um, we take our base goza. Nick can kind of elaborate on some of this, but effectively do variations. So we did a raspberry goza, a pineapple mango, and then we got a cherry plum one on now. Um, hopefully, a new one will be coming out in the next month or so. We try and do a new one every like four to eight weeks, but. Um, the raspberry people just went absolutely crazy for us. So that was actually, it was kind of exciting. And, and hopefully maybe we'll, you know, be able to bring that back this summer. So yeah. uh, that's exciting. Yeah. yeah. The cherry plum goes, I was looking at that. I mean, yeah. that, that, that sounds interesting. Definitely sounds, sounds like a tasty one. Yeah, definitely. I get, I remember trying all the goes at the opening and, uh, I think there was a release somewhere in Manhattan that had two or three of the goes at once. Check that out as well. Yeah, yep. I think we at Barcade got a keg of raspberry goza. I think um, it was kind of just like a. I think that was for an event though. But um, you know, uh, it's relatively expensive beer to make, so we try and keep it all kind of in house. Yeah. Uh, so we actually have a bunch of wine barrels full of beer right now that's sitting on the production space. Um, we're really fortunate that our CFO Keon is really good friends with um, Mike Beneducci, who owns a vineyard out in New Jersey. So we have kind of a pipeline straight from the winery to the brewery. Mm -hmm. um, he, whenever he has barrels, he calls us up and he's like, hey, do you guys want them? And I think we've always said yes whenever we get that <laughs> phone call. Uh, even if we don't have a plan for him, it's like, yeah, just send him over. We'll, we'll find something to do. Um, but at the moment, we have uh, a bunch of barrels 
two different beers. So we have a dark Saison and a pale Saison that we fermented out in stainless steel with Saison yeast, um, racked it into barrels, and then pitched each barrel with different, you know, Britannomyces and, and bacteria. So those are about six months old. We did a tasting a couple weeks ago and coming along nicely, nice and clean. Uh, but they'll probably have to sit for another, I'm, I'm guessing, a year to 18 months before we, you know, feel comfortable starting to do these, you know, more limited release bottle condition series. That's so, that's exciting. Yeah, it's like a hurry up and wait game, you know. <laughs> yeah. I, I look at them every day and it's like, no, just, you have to be patient. Just, just looking at the at the clock on the wall, right? Yeah, one of those things that you just can't rush. Yeah. So. Good things, uh, you got to wait for them sometimes. Yep. So anything that you'd like to leave the audience with, uh, anything you'd like to tell let them know about Five Burrows and, and who you guys are and, and, and what you guys are doing here. I mean, I would, I would say, again, just, you know, drink your local beer. Uh, I think that's really important, whether it's ours or another local brewery. Um, yeah. I think, you know, we're trying to drive this whole get out and try something new uh, experience. You know, go to a different neighborhood, come down and see us at Sunset Park or go up to a, a section of the Bronx or out to you know, take the ferry yeah. over to Staten Island. I mean, there's so much going on in the city. We, we notice people kind of tend to stick a little bit in their neighborhood sometimes, and mm -hmm. you know we're trying to yeah. we're trying to encourage that kind of exploration yeah. of the city. Kind of get out of your apartment, get out of your neighborhood, go and see what's new and exciting in the city. And you go up to Astoria, stop by Single Cut. You know, you go to LIC, stop by LIC Brew Project and, and Fifth Hammer, and everyone else on the LIC Beer Tour. You know, I think there's just there's so much exciting stuff, even non beer related, going on in the city. Obviously, it is, it is New York City, but. Um, just how much great beer there is coming out of this place and that, um, you know, to Kevin's point, kind of drink local, support local, um, whether it's us or, or our other colleagues. So, um, you know, um, yeah, that's yeah. what I would say. <laughs> no, absolutely. And we're, we're big proponents of that. We say that all the time. We tell people, get out there. I mean, there's a lot of great beers. Yeah. Uh, there's a lot of great beers all over. And it's interesting because you see sometimes people waiting online for beers and they're getting up for hours. And I think that's a really cool part of the scene, but you don't need to do that to get really good beer. You can just walk right in some place and get yeah. really awesome beer all over, all over New York, yeah. really. So it's, uh, it's exciting to see where, how the scene has grown. And I think um, it'll be interesting to see, I think circumstances have changed a little bit now from when the whole boom was. And now it's like you really, the, the brewers and, and the owners really just have to have all their, their, for lack of a better term, they'll throw all their shit together. Yeah. You know, it's not just about making great beer, although that's yeah. a big part of it. It's, it's the business, it's the marketing, it's the networking, it's all that other stuff. And yeah. it'll be interesting to see now what the next wave of uh, the New York the New York craft beer revolution will be. Yeah. I think, I mean, obviously quality is number one and, and, and marketing plays a close second, but I think the connection with the consumer and getting out there and, and making yourself known and, and, and taking feedback, I think is... Um, I mean, it's a consumer product good, you know? Um, yeah. you, you really kind of have to have that, that level of, of, of self-deprecation and, and the ability to sit there and take feedback and, and innovate and pivot. Um, and I think that's something that, um, you know, we're, uh, we pride ourselves on here, so. Excellent. What do you, what's your, uh, your top pick for what should be the class of 18 then? <laughs> <laughs> the class of 18? <sighs> I would really hope Grimm's in there. Uh, so I know, um, yeah. I know Lauren and Joe have been working on that, that space for quite some time and, um, um, I'd love to see them in there. So, um, and I, I think they will, so, um, I will be there. <laughs> yeah, that's really exciting. Yeah. We're waiting for um, Grim. Yeah. They, um, you know, everyone it, it's construction in New York city is never easy. So guys excited for anybody in 18. I mean, I think, you know, Grim is definitely exciting. <laughs> yeah. uh, I know Yepe has got to be getting close in his yeah. space. Um, Mickler should be opening up yep. 2018. Yeah. Um, yeah, yeah, it'll be exciting to see. You know, it, it also seems like once in a while people just pop up out of nowhere. So it'll yeah. be exciting to see if anyone, you know, yeah. kind of springs up. Yeah, oh, I, I went to school in Baltimore, so I would say Stillwater. I'm not sure what what his uh, what his timing's looking yeah. like, but it, it could certainly be 2018, I guess, for for his phase. That would be a pretty awesome collaborate. Yeah. I mean, that's what we're hoping that kind of what was started this year is, is something that's carried on, you know and uh, you know, who knows what the trajectory looks like in terms of number of openings. I don't care if even it's one, just brew a beer and call it class of 2019 or 20. I, I think it's just, it's a cool concept to, to not only kind of foster community, but to, to celebrate the growing craft scene. So, um, you know, outside of um, obviously um, kind of the fun that we had, I'm, I'm, we're hoping it's kind of a, a tradition that's carried on. So 
Yeah, I'm, I'm super excited at nine nine brewery collabo. <laughs> that's that's really awesome. We were stuff. looking at the can label. We're like, oh my god, <laughs> a lot of people on there. You gonna put all the yeah. names on, yeah, on the yeah. label? So everyone's names on there. Um, you know, we got some other surprises too in terms of um, you know uh, artwork and illustrations. So um, okay, some some stuff going on. So we're excited about it. Absolutely, absolutely. And now, if, if people want to find out more about you guys, where, where uh, what's the best way to do that? Uh, website fiveboroughs dot com and five v e oh, yeah. and then boroughs long way b o r o u g h s dot com and then um, our untaps on there, our Twitter's on there, our Facebook, um, kind of kind of the whole thing, Instagram as well. Um, so we're, yeah, we're usually pretty good about uh, using Facebook for our events, mm -hmm. um, you know, and uh, and Twitter as well, but Instagram, you know. Uh, does its thing with you know showcasing our brand and our yeah. beers and sure. the tap room and stuff like that so but uh yeah five boroughs website is the source for everything so uh, sign yeah. up for our newsletter try to get a newsletter out yeah. just about every month yeah kind of what's coming up in terms of events and new beers that are available in the tap room so special things and we actually just kicked off brewery tours uh about a week ago so every saturday and sunday we're doing tours at 1 2 and 3 p.m um so if you're interested in coming down having a beer and, and getting a tour um you know we're here so very cool. Very cool. And uh, and what are the hours of operation here? So we're open Thursdays from 4 to 10, Fridays from 4 to 11, Saturdays from noon to 11, and Sundays from noon to 10. Yeah. Right on, right on. So, Perry, any any uh, part in comments, thoughts? Just happy to see you guys are still doing well. You know? so Thank you. Yeah. The, uh, the opening. It's a great time then. It still seems like it's doing well. Yeah. So. Yeah, absolutely. Um, guys, any any parting thoughts? Any anything uh, that has not yet been said that you'd like to say? Appreciate the support. Thanks for coming down and yeah. chatting with us and uh, <laughs> promoting the local scene as you guys always do. So yeah, it's um, it's sec second time on. Yeah, so, second time. Um, yeah, last time was with uh, Katarina, so that was fun. Right. But uh, we always enjoy doing this stuff. So um, we appreciate the support you all give as well. So. Well, thank you guys, and thanks so much for hosting Beer Today, Beer Tomorrow at this uh, really awesome space. If uh, you guys listening have not been here, you definitely need to make the trip out. Come to Five Boroughs. Great space, great beers. And uh, if you've been here, just come back. It's great, a great time here. <laughs> Good beer. Um, and again, th thanks for listening, and, and shout out to the Five Borough crew. Thanks so much for hosting us. Thanks for having us. Cheers, thanks, man. Thanks. Cheers. Thanks for listening to this week's show. We really appreciate the support. Stay tuned because we've got a lot of exciting shows and special guests coming at you soon. Want to find out more about the Craft Beer Odyssey? Follow us on Instagram, Facebook, and Twitter. And of course, subscribe to the show on iTunes or Podbean. Until next week, you know what it is. Drink local, drink fresh, repeat. This is Beer Today, Beer Tomorrow, signing off. Cheers.